Hello friends. Welcome to Backside Story: Musings of a Gastroenterologist. New post. Why do we sleep? How much snooze time do we need? Sleep is the best meditation. Dalai Lama. Sleep is a basic human need, just like eating, drinking, and breathing. It is vital to good health. Sleep deficiency can cause serious health concerns and even increases one's risk of death. But it can also inspire some sleep-deprived stories that can be hilarious and help us shift gears out of a crabby lethargic slump. Number 1. As a new intern after a 30-hour call shift, I arrived home tired and sleepy i was so delirious that i forgot to lift the cover from the toilet seat and started peeing the warm sprinkles on my ankles woke me up i was so mad at the mess i created number 2 we were excited with the birth of our twins and booked a photography session one week after their delivery after about 1 hour into the session The kids needed to be fed. My wife got the girls latched and we both snoozed. The photographer checked on us after 30 minutes to ensure we were still there. Thankfully, she was a mother of twins herself, so we all just laughed. Number 3. As a sleep-deprived mom, my wife had pumped 5 ounces of milk and she put the bottle in the freezer uncapped. She was so pissed to find the milk coating the freezer floor the next day. Now, time for me to explain the science of sleep by answering some common questions about the siesta time. Number 1. Why do we sleep? How does our mind or body know that it is time to snooze? There is continuing research to elucidate the basic mechanisms of sleep. A lot still needs to be understood. Many factors play a role in maintaining the sleep-wake cycle. The first factor to help us sleep is via a chemical known as adenosine. This substance continues to rise in our brain when we are awake. The increasing level of this compound signals our brain to become drowsy and crave sleep. When we are asleep, the body breaks down this chemical. Its decreasing levels thus help us in waking up. The second important factor is our internal body clock. That's right. We do have a clock inside our body. This clock is in sync with environmental signals such as light and sound light signals perceived by eyes inform a special area in the brain that it is daytime however when it gets dark the body releases a chemical known as melatonin as evening progresses the amount of this chemical in the body peaks this helps us feel lethargic and somnolent This exposure to darkness is thus very important in helping us prepare to sleep. Exposure to bright light in the evening such as artificial light from TVs, computer screens can disrupt this cycle thus inhibiting our ability to fall asleep. As the dawn approaches and the sun rises, our body releases cortisol. This particular hormone prepares our body to wake up. Isn't it fascinating that our bodies have internal clocks and rhythms? Furthermore, this rhythm changes as we age. For example, in adolescence, the melatonin peaks later in the 24-hour cycle. Thus, most teens prefer to sleep late and wake up later than most adults. and children number 2 how much sleep do we need 
The amount of sleep we need every day changes over the course of our lifetime. There can be some individual variations from person to person regarding the duration of sufficient sleep. However, American Academy of Sleep has provided general recommendations for different age groups. I'll show you this data in a tabular form. But in general, infants aged 4 to 12 months should sleep about 12 to 16 hours a day. Children from 1 to 2 years of age need about 11 to 14 hours a day including naps. Children from 3 to 5 years of age need about 10 to 13 hours a day of sleep time. 6 to 12 year olds need about 9 to 12 hours a day of sleep time. Teens from 13 to 18 years of age need about 8 to 10 hours of sleep time and adults aged 18 years and older need about 7 to 8 hours daily. Question number 3. Are naps enough? Sometimes we don't sleep enough and thus use naps to fight the drowsiness. These cat naps may provide a short-term increase in attentiveness and performance. However, these don't provide all of the other benefits of nighttime slumber. Thus, one cannot really make up for lost sleep. Do you sleep enough? Do you feel rested the next day? Well, if you're not sure, I suggest using a sleep diary or your phone to create a week-long log of sleep duration. Bad sleep habits and sleep loss will affect your health. Just like some of us try to achieve better health by understanding our eating habits and counting calories or counting steps walked as a measure of activity and exercise, defining and totaling our sleep duration is as critical and imperative to good health. Finally, I read it somewhere. Your future depends on your dreams. So, go to sleep. What was the most useful part of this article for you? Have you ever wondered like or know that how many hours do you usually sleep? Please, share your thoughts and comments. In my next blog, I'll address the adverse health impact of sleep deprivation and tips to improve sleep quality and duration. Thank you very much for listening. Keep smiling.